Okay, so welcome to the session on Google Classroom. I think the majority of you are P to 3 teachers. I'm hoping that since uh, you were asked to get ready for online learning, that you have started uh, creating a Google Classroom. So I'm not going to take too long at the beginning, hoping all of my my links work. Um, I'm going to go to my launch page just to show you a, a couple of different places where you can get to your Google Classroom. Of course, your Google Classroom is on your launch page. But also, if you're if you're on a Chromebook and you're signed in properly to the Chromebook, as in don't go in as a guest, sign in as with your Gnesbes account. When you open a new tab, you will also have a waffle. I, I think this is taking a little bit catching up to me. There, there we go. Uh, you'll have a waffle on the right hand side where you can click it opened and you should have your apps here also and you should be able to find google classroom there so from either spot is fine so right now i have a lot of google classrooms and this is what i call my tiled page uh, so i'm going to if you want to create a google classroom the first time you're going to go plus and Actually, the very first time you log in, they're going to, it's going to ask you whether you are a teacher or a student. And of course, you're going to make sure you choose teacher. If you chose student by mistake, we will have to go through Halifax to get you switched back to being a teacher. So just don't make that mistake. You have the option of joining a class if you wanted to jump in on another teacher's class. Uh, or you can create your own class. So that's how you would do that there. I'm just going to show you for now. You would create a class. You would give it a name. I really, really suggest that when you create a class that you put the section, where well, you could call it any section, but in one of the spots, I would definitely put the year. It would be uh, um, I just got a, a note from Scott saying that all he can see on the screen is a flashing cursive L. Oh, okay, now I think, okay, you know what, maybe, maybe take Spotlight off and tell me if, if you can now see my screen being shared. Okay, Kim's saying we can see the, sh see the screen. So, when I'm on a Google Meet and I'm sharing the screen, it's like I'm two people. So, Scott, you're seeing my uh, cursive L because that's me who's me talking. And then there is another one where it's me as sharing my screen. So hopefully you'll be able to find it. Okay, everybody else seems to be able to, to share my screen. So hopefully we'll get, Scott, you'll get that fixed. So when you're creating a class, I do suggest that you in the section give it the year because you'll start doing this year after year after year and you want to make sure that you're always in the right year and after that you also can archive the classes so some okay great some of the some of the um teachers that had maybe um some students that were in the grade one class last year and they're in grade two this year that, that when the students log in they're still in last year's class. So this class has two files from last year's class and this year's class. So you really want to archive the old class. You do that by pressing the three buttons and hitting archive. That doesn't mean it's gone forever. It doesn't mean it's deleted. It just means it's going to put it somewhere out. I'm going to do it with that. So, I can those. so you click the three dots and you press archive. So I just archived. Um, it's saying by archive it, it's going to be archived to all the participants. So the students will no longer be able to get in to it and do anything. So if I hit archive and where you find them again, and we'll probably come back to this later is up here. There are three, I call it a hamburger, hit the hamburger and all of your classes will be listed here. Now, depending on how many you have, you scroll all the way down and you see archived classes. If you click archived classes, you can see these are grayed out. These are just a lot of ones that I was making and, and doing it. If I want it to bring that one back to life, I just hit the three dots again and I can restore it. One of the things I like to do is depending on the kind of year you had, if you had a great Google Classroom and you loved all the assignments, 
the upright class and it would make a fresh new one, but it would keep all of the assignments that you did, but the stream would be emptied and the students would no longer be in it. Cool. The other thing you can do, again, add to hamburger. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my regular classes. You can move these around. So I don't like this one. It's not the one I'm using all the time. I can, I can click on it and drag it and put it somewhere else. So if you are in other, other teachers' classes and you wanna make sure yours are at the beginning, you can do that. Also on this page, uh, there is a calendar. The calendar would just tell you all of the things that you have assigned to your classes. Now, again, if you, you guys are P to three, so you, you probably only have the one class that you're working with, but all of your classes would be listed there and you could look at one class at a time if you wanted to. And the other thing is the to review. The to review is if students have passed in assignments and you've not, not um, looked at them or returned them yet, so let's just say I want to look at this class. I can uh, see that I have two students that turned this in, two that have not done it. I only have four people in my fake class, and zero of them are graded. If I want to see the two that are turned in, I can press Control on my keyboard, Control, and click that two, and you'll see, I don't know if you noticed it, but a new tab opened up on the top right-hand side, right beside my classroom tab. And I come to the to place where I can see those two things. And we'll get we'll look at that after late also. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna open a class. Let's start with this one for now. Okay, so just getting to know your your classroom. Uh, one thing is you can see that I've changed the theme of my classroom. You can change the theme by, again, I'm, I'm going to actually just come out and go back in. I'm going to, I have, um, I want to see if I can, you can see my cursor. It's really hard when you can't see it. So I apologize for this. So I stopped sharing for a moment. And I'm going to try to reshare my entire screen see if that works any better. Okay. Okay, I think you can see my cursor this time with entire screen. It's a little slow, but you can see it. Okay, so we're on the main um, classroom. Again, if I wanted to get back to my other classrooms, I would just click here and click classes, click the three lines at the left hand side. If I want to change the theme, I can go select theme and there's lots of pre-made themes there that you might like. So you can click over and look at different ones and you can pick one, whatever you like and say select class theme. I'm not going to do it because I like the one I have. Um, you can see, you can create your own, you could actually copy any any uh, image off the internet, but if you want to create your own theme, um, you can see that I did that in this class. So what I did was I went to a Google um, slide and I simply just went in and I changed the background, changed the background color. I changed the size of the slide, and now a lot of people may not um, really get into this, but I, I made it the size of the banner. So I went File, Page Setup, and I changed it to 16.67 times 4.17, and I will, I will put that somewhere so you guys can do it. And what it does is it makes it banner size. So at that point, you can take a take a, a picture of it or the easiest thing to do is to go to file and go download so if you guys can see that so whatever kind of picture you've made here you could put in your bitmoji do whatever you want go file download and you download it as a jpeg oops download it as a jpeg 
and then you can upload it to the computer. So I'm going to download it and it's going to go down the bottom of my screen. Oh, it's asking me to save it. So I'm going to press save and I will go back to my Google Classroom. I will go upload a photo and I'm going to select a photo from my computer. And it was in my downloads file. Now I'm, I'm, on, a, I'm on a Mac, so it's a little bit different than what you're going to see. So I'm going to upload it. No. And it will pull it in for me. I can make it as big or as small as I want. I can drag these corners. Get as much as I want and select class theme and pop it in. It does gray it out a little bit, and there's nothing we can do about that. And you can see that on my, my um, Google trial one. It's we don't have any gray around, that do we? Is, there's just nothing we can do about that. That's the only way it will work. So that is your the pretty the pretty part of this. So now we're going to go to looking at oh yeah the tabs along the top. Yeah. So first thing is we are in the stream. The stream is where you leave messages for your class. Oh, actually, I'm going to back up and I'm going to go to the settings cog first oh before we get into the stream. Well, over on the right hand side, to, you guys can see my cursor like again. Forward. You can see it moving over on the right hand side. Wow. There's a gear or a cog there. I'm going to click it. And this is where, again, you can get the class details. I could change change anything I want here. I could put the 2021 down here. Um, or I could put it in section. Class description, room, subject, whatever you like. Now, a couple of things that we have here, the invite code. For your students to log in, you could invite them. Um, you could invite them one at a time with their emails, or you could shine this up on the classroom. So my code to get into my fake class is this. So you could have your screen up on there, up on the board and the students could to um, put this in. Now this code isn't too bad because it just has eyes and uh, not too bad, but if you want to change the code at any time, you can hit reset. And you can hit reset as many times as you like. And you can see it's changed a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. I like to avoid zeros and O's and L's and ones. So you can keep resetting, resetting, resetting until you get one that you like to display to the to the students and then just and then just leave it on. So that's the first thing. The stream. The stream that when I first started talking about the stream where you would leave class your class messages, it defaults to only stu uh, to students can post and comment. You depending on what you want, um, we may be teaching digital manners and you may want to leave that the students can post and comment and if there's anything inappropriate, that a student uh, posts, you can delete it. And it's not really, really deleted because you can see this option down below that you can show the deleted items. So if you had to delete a post and only you can delete the post, the teacher can. Um, if a student put something there that was inappropriate or if a, a, a parent sent you a message that you thought definitely should not be on the stream, then you, you can delete it um, and teach people or you can put the only teachers can post or comment. I like only teachers can post or, or comment uh, for now until you know you really start teaching those digital manners. So again you can click this on to show deleted items so if there was a uh, something where a student had posted something you could show it to the administration or to the parents it's not really gone if you delete the post. The other thing is guardian summaries. It defaults to off. I'm going to show you the example that's here. It says see example. Uh, what it's going to do is it's not letting parents in to your Google Classroom. It's going to send them messages and, the, and they can decide what kind of messages they get. So this just popped me over to the actual Google support page and what it will give is a weekly summary or a daily summary about the student's work. Now you may and I don't suggest for P to 3 that you have a lot of things that have due dates. I think you'll be giving students information that they'll be 
you know, working on, but not necessarily having due dates. I think that this due dates are more for the older, the older students. But if you did have something that had a due date or something that was missing that the students had, hadn't done, the parents would get, get that um, email. Now, they're not going to get the email until I show you another, another part under the People tab. So we'll come back to Guardian Summaries after that. The Meet link is the next thing. And I forgot to say this when, on my last session. Um, there is a Meet link now that is uh, directly on your page. So let me pop back again to the main page. And um, I'm just going to discard that to my main page, uh, you can see, if you can see, up here where I have my title and it says my class code and it says meet link. Now, you may not have anything there yet. It may say generate meet link. You have to just click on that and it creates a meet link that your students will use all the time. So you no longer have to create a meet in the calendar. This is going to be the one specific meet that your students use every single time. So in the stream, you would do an announcement and you would say, meeting, uh, Google meeting, please hit the meet link above at 1 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. So I know that the, your students are going to be of the age that they're not home alone. I'm not saying that they can do all this alone, but um, if the message is sent out, that or maybe you have a, a time that this is always when we're on please join if you can that that the parents would help them get on their google classroom and and click this and then they would be automatically in a meeting with you the one thing is that unlike our meetings that we do all as teachers uh, many of you were on my meeting before i got in even though i was the host the students will not be able to get into the meeting until you're into the meeting. They will get a notification saying that they are um, not allowed into the meeting un un until the teacher accepts them. So you have to make sure, you know, get on 10, 10 minutes before so that the students can get in and not having problems with that. So that is a really nice new feature that you're not sending out this new meet link every time you want to have a, have a meeting with the kids. So another thing, and I, I keep skipping over the stream, um, when we're when we get back to doing assignments, I'm I'm also going to suggest that, and again, I'm 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 not the boss of anyone, but um, P to three, maybe you don't want all your students on a meeting at one time if you were having a meeting uh, with them if we went to to at home learning. Uh, maybe you only want certain students to meet. So you could have the announcement saying, please meet me. And you'll notice that right here, there's a drop down. And you can choose a certain number of students. So I think, I'm trying to remember what, what the uh, guidelines are, but I think it was something about uh, be online with your students a half hour a day, something like that. But that doesn't mean that you are online for a half hour a day. It just means the students have to be online for a half hour a day. So this is a great way to do some small group instruction. You could um, uncheck the all students, check the maybe two, three, four, five students that you can manage at one time and meet with them. And so you would send them the time that it's their meeting and only those students would know to come in because that message in the stream would only go to them. And you could meet with those five students and then do another half hour with another five students and so on. So again, that's just an idea, a thought that, that, that might work. I honestly can't, um, can't imagine trying to do too much with say 20, 20 grade primaries or 20 grade ones in at one time on a Google Meet, I have to admit. So that's an option there. And it, that will also be a way when, when you're sending assignments and that you can differentiate assignments. If when we are, are sending things to students, you may want to send different material to different students. Okay, so finally back to, back to the stream. I pretty much said everything here. So again, this is where you're going to give everything to the students. I have opened here the view where I can see the assignment details. You can see that it's large. I'm going to go back to, I'm sorry, just, just give me one moment here.
Sorry, I was just just closing closing a door here. Okay, so back to the settings cog. So we got through general and the invite codes and the guardian summaries and the meet, and you can turn the meet off so it doesn't have to be visible to the students. You can turn it back on. And uh, then there is a oh, grading. Oh, I missed the one that I, uh, the grading categories. I, I really feel that this is underdeveloped. I don't use this grading thing at all. There was one thing I, oh, right here. This is the one I missed. Classwork on the stream. So this drop down list shows that you can hide the notifications, which you would have nothing on the stream, or you can show condensed notifications or show attachments and details. So you just saw my version of attachments and details. I'm going to show you what condensed looks like. I'm hoping that it will switch it over for me. So condensed notifications, if I go back to my stream, now you can see how small these are. They're just very small, just one liners now. And it doesn't show the full amount of, of work that's there. I think for the students that are younger, especially, that I would leave it on showing the full attachments and notifications so that they would know to click on something to look at it or with their parents' help. So there's the difference. So that is the stream. Um, Okay, well, I'm just going through my little notes to see what we did. Okay, so let's go to the classwork tab. The classwork tab is really where all your assignments or your resources or anything that you want the students to have um, to be, to be uh, put here. It's really the bread and butter of a classroom. And again, I know this is harder with, with smaller kids. Um, we can see here that we have a create button and there's lots of things in create. We can create an assignment. So I'm just gonna go down a couple of these things. An assignment would be something that you want the students to return to you. If you created a document and you wanted them to work on the document or insert a picture on the document or type into a document, um, you would put it as an assignment so that you could look at the work that they're doing. It gives you the option to give whatever you're sending out to each individual student. The second one is quiz assignment. A quiz assignment automatically creates a Google form for you. A Google form, again, depending on the age of the student, might not be something that you would send out to your students. Obviously, they need to, to read. Um, the third one is a question similar to a Google form, but really is just one single question that you could ask them for an answer and they could potentially see all the answers to all, that all the other students give. You can turn that option on and off. Material would be something that you would just post. Maybe you want to post um, information that the parents should read or um, any kind of Google Doc or anything, something that the students are not going to work on. You can also reuse a post. So you could click and reuse a post that you've used before. And you can create topics. You can see that I have created some topics already. If you're uh, of a student's age where you might have art, math, and science, I know in the older grades, sometimes they have uh, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three for their topics, or they might have week one, week two, week three depends what you want there. So we're going to look at creating assi an assignment right now. So creating an assignment, and I'm going to call this, now I've done this a few times, I'm going to call this reading log. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find this, but one of the things that I saw on the literacy site is that they had this really nice reading log. And I thought, what a great idea to send the reading log out as an assignment to the students. Again parents would need to help them out here. So you might uh, put the information there saying, please fill in the sheet as you read your books. So there's a couple of options when you do an assignment. You can hit add, which means you can add anything from your Google Drive. You could add a link to to um, a website, you could add a file from your computer, or you could actually add a YouTube video for the students to watch. 
The other options are create, and you could create from scratch a Google Doc, slide, sheet, drawings, or forms. I'm going to try to find the reading log so I can show this to you. I'm going to add from my Google Drive, and I'm going to just try to search the name. You guys can see this, yep, reading log. Oops, that was not what I wanted. <laughs> Try that again. Google Drive. And I'm looking for... Uh, of course, I'm not going to be able to find it as I... Out copy of, okay, maybe this one. Out copy. Okay, so I'm going to pick one and put it in. Oh, I did too. Okay, so prime. So I have an example of primaries reading at home log. So before I'm going to post this, I am going to look at the drop down list, and you only have one time to do this, and you will only see this here if it is an assignment. If you do material, you will not see this option. So the three options are students can view the file, students can edit the file, and students can make a copy for each student. If you do, students can view the file, just like anything that's shared with us. If people don't want us to edit it, they say view the file. We absolutely want the students to edit the file, but if we choose students can edit the file, they're all going to be working on the file at one time. We don't want that. Uh, we want them all to have an individual sheet, so I want to choose make a copy for each student. Now, a couple of things before I send this out to my students. Maybe you're doing this on an evening. I'm going to press, I might have gone too fast there. Up here, we get to choose to whom we send it to. You can send it to all of your students. This is what I was talking about with differentiated uh, work. You may click that off and only send it to a couple of your students if that's what you wish to do. And well, of course, if you had more than one class, you could send it to more than one class at a time also. You can change the points or you can say ungraded. And most of the things uh, for assessment will probably be ungraded. It's not going to have a numerical value. I wouldn't give a due date for students, but you could for younger students. I wouldn't give a due date. And you could do a topic. So you could choose your topics. And if you don't have the right topic here, you could create topic. Maybe it's just going to be in resources. Um, OK, so that is it. If you don't want to assign it right away, you can schedule it. And that will give you a time and date to schedule it for the students. Or you could save it as a draft if you don't want to send us send it out right now or you want to write more in for your instructions the instructions may be you know parents could you please help your students fill out these form when they're reading their books and or maybe you want to give them some ideas of what the books are and if you wanted to give them an, the idea of some books maybe you want to add another you can add more than one document here you could create another document that is going to um give them suggestions for the books that they're going to read. I am going to show you that for a second. If you do create, if you hit create here and create docs, I want you to notice my tab up on the top right hand corner. If I hit docs, create a new document, it's going to open a new tab for me right away up by my classroom. So you didn't really get popped out. Um, just opening a new tab that I and I could title my document and do that and of course I would go back to my classroom after I finished it. And if that was the case, if this is going to be my suggested reading, I would make sure that the students can only view this file because you don't want them changing that list. So let's see, I'm going to assign this. Now, I didn't log in yet. I wasn't thinking about this. Uh, I'm going to jump over. I'm hoping you guys can, don't worry about, I'm just going to jump over and try to be a student for a second. I'm going to log into an account that I use as my fake account. Okay, so here I am as a student. So let's see what this looks like. 
As a student, again, they're going to log in and they go to their launch page. They are going to hit classroom. And they will see that a reading log is here. I think I did change the date to a due date. So they can see that it is assigned. They can do a couple of things. Um, they can click on it and it will open it up. Uh, the second one did not come through. I wonder if I deleted the wrong one by mistake. Sorry about that, you guys. Just gonna pop back for a second and look at this assignment. Um, It seems like only one of them came through. I'm going to go back and edit that. Back to my classwork. And I'm three buttons to edit up here. Three buttons to edit. And I do have each student. I'm just going to delete this one out of here and save. And pop back being a student. And here we are. So I opened that up, might have done that too fast. So the student would log in, they're going to create this, hit, hit this, and they can see their reading log. And they could write the names in so they can go on the they can go on the date uh, if they want. Um, January, I don't even know what the date is. It's the fifth, right? January fifth, they, they, they can write um, the name of the book, they can say that it's a book and so on. But this could be a running thing and the parents could actually write down, you know, what the time was, their enjoyment level. So again, this came from the literacy site. I borrowed that just as an example, as an example from them. So they can continue on and they can just add an ad and they can click on that um, over and over and over again and go back to that same document. Going back to looking at this as a teacher, how do we see this afterwards? If I want to see all of my students work, I hit view assignment down here. You guys can see it. This link will take me to the document. This link will take me to an assignment page. I'm gonna hit the assignment page. You can see that when I did make a copy for each student, every student in my class got a copy of the, the log. And even though they didn't turn it in. So you can see zero turned in. And again, I have no expectations of the students actually turning this in. I can click on the my only student that I that did anything was CBV. If I click on CBVs, it opened it in the next tab. You can see that at the top, opened it in the next tab, and I can actually see what they wrote. So I can look at that as many times as I want. I can still see that my student is still on it. I could send my students a private comment over here on the right hand side, an overall private comment, or I might just click beside the name of the title and I can click a smaller comment in different places on the document. So I'm not sure if you can see this and see where my cursor is. There's a little button up the top that says add comment. If I click that little add comment button, I can write um, anything to the student and comment right in that spot. I'm going to go back to being a student so you guys can see what it looks like. Pop back to being a student and you can see, I can see as a student that my teacher said great book or any other information that you want to give them. So that is an example of the reading log. Okay. So now, let me see where I was going from here. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to talk about, um, I was going to talk about sharing a screen. I'm going to try, I don't know if I can open a, a screen on a Google Meet, if I'm already on a Google Meet, but I will attempt to do this. I'm going to go back to my classroom tab. I can see it at the top. Getting back to my main page, I click the name of the classroom and I'm going to look at my Google Meet. So a lot of times, uh, a lot of great things is you might want to have a Google Meet 
with the students. And I don't really want to get into all the to the Google Meet, but you might have a Google Meet with the students and you want to present to them. Again, I better not press it because I don't want to pop all of you guys out of this Google Meet, but you want to present like I'm presenting to you. So I just wanted to show you some, some things that might um, be kind of cool that you could do. I thought maybe as classwork, you could send or create a, a, uh, an assignment that is a uh, Google Slideshow. So you're going to notice that it's a Google Slides. It's going to create the Google Slides for me. And right at the top right-hand corner, it popped me, opened a new um, tab. So let's say, and I'm not sure, don't, uh, you, you, you guys would be able to catch me on content. So again, I, I am not the literacy person. Uh, you, guys, you guys know your work and what you're supposed to be doing. So I'm, I just am using this as an example. Let's say I wanted to do sight words with the kids. So maybe I want to prepare something and send it to them early. And then maybe I want to use this as a presentation later when I'm with a few with my small group. Um, show them something and get them to turn their microphones on and get them to be saying some words. So I'm going to make a Google slideshow over it. So I would, first of all, I don't like this. I like the one, I mean, a little drop down on um, beside the plus arrow. And I like the blank one down the bottom. I would like it to be colorful for the students. So I'm going to now hit background and do a color that's just a little bit nicer for them. And now maybe well, I'm going to go up and delete that one. Didn't like that one. Now, once I have that, I'm going to put my first word in. So I'm going to hit a text box. And I'm going to see it's a very small cursor. Maybe you want to pop this up. So I'm hitting the plus arrow or put the number in. I'm going plus, 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 plus. And or I could just scroll down and pick a, choose, <laughs> pick a larger one. And I might I'm, I'm just saying might do cat and i might want to put it in the middle so i'm opening this to get it in the middle so there's lots of different things that you could could do with um google slides and you can change what it kind of font you have so let's say you have something like that or you want to put lots on one page so i don't want to have to do that every time so i can now go over to the left hand side where my first slide is i can right click on it and i can say duplicate slide and i can keep going duplicate slide duplicate slide and then i can go back and i can click on this and i not i don't have to change the size every time i can just do different different words and so on. So that's just an option. And then this would be something that you could very easily present, to, uh, put this up when you're presenting a Google Meet, you could do present or you could put this on the board and you could uh, go through it and, and present it to the students and hit escape to pop out of that. So that was one of the ideas. Now, um, some uh, other ideas would be, um, I'm going to drag this over. There are so, so many things online. And honestly, the, the, um, the states, although our curriculum is going to be different, of course, but the states, so many teachers in the states have been teaching online for so long that they are so good to be sharing work. Now, I know some of you use Teachers Pay Teachers, and there's lots of work there. But you can also find a lot of uh, free stuff out there. And I have to say that uh, I joined one group on Facebook, and it was called, I'm hoping not to forget what it was called. I wrote it down somewhere, so I'm flipping through papers. Um, and again, I'm not I'm not really telling you to get your work from Facebook, don't get me wrong, but they do have lots of things out there that you could go through and assess yourself to decide whether you want to do it. But uh, the Facebook group is called uh, Digital Resources for Elementary Students and lots of great things on here. So I just want to show you one thing that I found on there. A lot of times they do Google slideshows where it forces you to create a copy right away 
or if they don't do that, sometimes you open it and it says view only. Now, mine doesn't say view only right now, but if there was something that said view only, actually, I'll do that for you right now. I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to share it. I'm going to copy this link and I'll show you what it looks like. Let me get back to my Google Meet for a second. I'm going to put this in here. And I'm sorry, I have had people that have been sending out some chats, but because I wasn't on this screen, I um, I didn't didn't quite get through. So hopefully, hopefully everybody's okay there. Um, I'm going to. All I'm doing here is taking the share button, and I'm changing this word edit to the word copy, and I'm going to send that to you. And if you guys hit that link. What it's going to do is it's going to tell you to automatically make a copy. So if I hit the link, it forces me to make a copy. So you would hit make a copy and then it would be yours and only yours in your Google Drive. Uh, I'm just going to go back. Uh, uh, Patty is asking, is there some way to make existing wor worksheets or forms we want to assign interactive? And yes, there is, Patty. I have a a um, nice YouTube video on that. I'll show you where that is while we're there. Uh, okay, I'm just going to open this up while while we're taking a tiny break. Oh, Malcolm Rowe is calling me. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, sorry about that, go to my just trying to find the launch page. Here's my launch page. On my launch page, or on your launch page, everybody's launch page, I have a link to my website. It will take you directly to the how-to. So if I click this, it opens this page. And there are little drop-down lists here. And I believe that is under Google Classroom. So I have lots of videos on Google Classroom here about how students can submit photos to Google Classroom, um, how to create Google quizzes, and here's the one that you would be interested in, how to turn PDFs into digital worksheets. And it's a great little um, hack on how to take a picture of a PDF, whether you take a picture of a piece of paper with your phone and, and send it into your, Google class, into your Google Drive. But it needs to be in your Google Drive, an image, not the PDF, an image of your PDF in your Google Drive, and you put it in as the background in a Google slide, and then you use a table. You insert a one by one table, and that's what the students write in. So you guys can watch that video on that. Let me get back and look if there was any other questions. Um, it's saying request access. Really? OK, let me just see. I better do my share button first and say change to anybody, anyone in this, it is really saying request access. Hopefully I did the link the right way. Try again. Okay, let me see what ha happens when I do that. The letter match. Hmm. I'm going to try that link myself. So you're clicking this. And when you go make a copy, it's asking for access. OK, so if that's happening and you can't get it to work, you can just go over to File, Make a Copy Yourself. I'll send you a new link. So I'm going to send you a link, only I'm going to allow you to view it and you guys will do make a copy yourselves so try that link no you shouldn't have to be uh, students in my google classroom Okay, working now. 
Okay, great. I'm not quite sure what I did wrong there. Sorry about that. So if you're ending up on a document, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, if you're going, okay, yeah, I see lots of you on my document. So right now, you guys are all on my document. To make your own document, you would go file, make a copy, because I have it so that you can't edit it. You would want to make, make one for yourself, and you'd want to go make a copy uh, entire presentation. So this example on this also has this, you can find more work from this one particular person that I got this from at this link right here. So I wanted to show you that also. Uh, actually, I'll show you the slide show first, which was kind of cool. What she made was, um, I can match letters. And so she, oops, the student needs to, um, you need to have the little crosshairs for it to work. Sorry, my, uh, my mouse is, is giving me trouble here. The little crosshairs and you, the student would slide over the letter. So what I would do is I would send this out in my Google Classroom as an assignment. So don't forget, if we're in classwork, I'll just close this. I would add something from my drive. I would go to my Google Drive. And it was copy of, so I would click on it's my recent, so it's easy to do. I would go insert, and I would make sure that the students have a copy for themselves. And of course, actually, before you do that, before you send it to the students, you want to make sure that, I'm going to X out of that, and I have one other thing to say about that. When you send something to students, uh, the first time, okay, back to this. You want to make sure that you delete this first slide before you send it to students. So once it's yours and you know that you're going to use it, you would you would um, delete this slide before you send it to the students. Okay, so back to the classroom, back to adding something from your Google Drive, and you would pick whatever you're going to do. You would insert it. And you would make sure again that you would make a copy for each student and then you would assign it. Oh, it needs a title before I do that. Okay, and then assign it. When it does that, the students will be able to edit it. Okay, let me go back. I'm gonna make sure I don't have no other questions here. Um, Okay, okay, I think we're okay. Um, uh, Andrea asked, do all students see the assignment if some students are not assigned? I'm gonna check that out for you right now. I'm going to go to my Google Classroom and I'm going to create a new assignment and I'm gonna call it, I don't, I'll call it something different, I'll call it um, testing. Okay, so if I do that and I have instructions for a student, if I created a doc that I'm adding to it, I'm not going to actually do the doc. Uh, I'm just going to pretend I have it and I'm going to go up to all students. I'm going to specifically not choose this student. I'm going to choose my other students in my class. So I did not choose CBV and I'm going to press assign. So this was called testing. I don't think it assigned. OK, and now I'm going to go back to being my student, back to the classroom, their classroom. And you can see that the last thing that they got was letter match, so they did not get that assignment called testing. So no, it doesn't go to all students if you only assign it to some. Um, okay, and I think I don't think I missed anybody's questions. Oh, uh, yeah, Lindsay asked, do students automatically exit out of the Google Meet when the teacher exit out of the Google Meet? So the Google Meet rules are 
that the teacher needs to be the last person out. Otherwise, the students can stay in. So you want to make sure that all of the students have turned or um, have turned off, not turned off their mics, but have hung up, leave, left the call before you do. So that's an important one. Okay, let me go back to my Google Class, and I just want to show you now where you can find the work that you're doing. So again, if you want to see, oh, I did that. You can press on the assignment. You can do view assignment. You can click on these as you go through. So I could click this, and you'll notice a tab will open, and it will be CBV's reading log. I can go back and open up Boba Fett's reading log, and you'll notice that they're opening tab after tab at the top for me when I do that, and you can see it. Uh, again, you could give marks, but a P to three, you probably will, will not, be, not be working with that. Um, let me just look at my notes and see what else, if I'm missing anything. I, I was going to give you another, I had an int, oh yes, I was going to give you this link. This, um, this lady that's called Winter Storm, she has lots of cool things. Again, I'm just showing you some cool things. I'm not uh, promoting <laughs> promoting these. Again, you you want to get a lot of your content from your from your uh, literacy teams and math teams and and so on. So we have that. That was just something that I wanted to share with you. And there was one more. There was an interactive. Let me just go back to my drive. Oops, go back to my drive for a second. Anyway, you will find lots of, of neat things uh, out there on the internet. And of course, don't forget all of, all of the rules that, that we have to follow before we're sending things out to students. Mm. Here's the link here. Um, I'm not sure if this copy one's going to work again, but give it a try. I'm hoping that's going to work for you. Can can you do breakout groups, for example, if a resource teacher wanted to work with three students? Um, so Lynn, yes, you can do breakout groups in a way. Uh, probably <clears throat> if the students are going to use that link that's on the Google Classroom, the resource teacher should be added as a teacher on your Google Classroom so they can also use it, I, they would have to use their own brand new separate link if you want to do something at the same time. So I, I, my suggestion would be that in the classroom where they, I would invite uh, a teacher to the classroom, I'm going to show you that. If I go back to my main page, I can go to people. I didn't go to the people tab yet. I can add a teacher. So if I wanted to add the resource teacher, I think I'm losing connection here. Uh, are we back? Are we still? OK, hopefully we're back. OK, so you can add a teacher just by their teacher email. That would be great. And with the resource teacher added in there, that that should work, work out OK. You just can't be on the meet at the same time. Uh, here with the people. You can invite guardians here. I'll in, if you hit invite guardians, it's only going to give you a place where you can type their email. I do have a video on my website to show you where to find how to find their emails on your Power Teacher. So you could type them in, and they will just simply get a message saying that you have invited them. But they will only get those uh, guardian emails that I talked about earlier. So that's that. Uh, the grades tab, the grades tab is just going to show you everything that you put in as an assignment. Oh, I think you're catching up to me just a second. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see my grades tab yet. Mm. Okay, uh, Cindy, I'll fix that link too. I'll send you the real one. Uh, you guys don't seem to be catching up to me. I, I, can you guys see my grades tab now? What are you are you still seeing? Still seeing the people tab. 
Oh, you can see the grades tab? Excellent, okay. So on this, if you want to get to an assignment this way, if you instead of the big long list that's on, on your classwork tab, you can just click here. So if I clicked letter match here, I, I pop to the same thing and I can see each student's work. Okay, let me fix that other tab, the uh, other link for you guys. So this one is just about a calendar. Uh, again, it, it, it did come from the States, so you may want to fix it, but I know a lot of you work, do calendar work when you come in in the morning. I, I feel like my connections are, are really slow here. Everything is super slow. I am going to change to Gina's Pez. Okay, so I'm only making you guys um, a viewer on this. So again, you would do make a copy. Let's try that again. Okay, hopefully that one will work. Um, okay, so I, as I'm looking through my notes, I'm trying to think of some things that I may have missed. We are at 11.30. Uh, if I'm going to stop sharing my screen for, well, I'll leave that up just in case people have questions. Uh, Jenny's asking, do you know of any privacy issues with having kids from more than one school in the same classroom? Like if I wanted to just, uh, I don't know, Jenny, I don't, I don't know that one. I don't know the answer to that. I can't see more than one school. I think that maybe ask your principals. Not 100% short. Okay, so I'm just waiting for any other questions. The link to the editable, you know what? Um, I'm going to try to find that. So Patty's asking, can I show the editable reading log link. So all I did, Patty, was when I opened it up, I just did make a copy of it. So did what did I send you? Did I send that one to you at all? Mm, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. So I, I'm just going to try to go find it on the literacy site. Uh, or I'll just, I'll give you a link to mine. That's all. I still have that opened. Okay, just give me a moment. I'll find that. Um, okay. Again, I apologize, it's just a little, my computer is suddenly getting really slow, but I have a, a ton of tabs opened and on a Google Meet and lots of people on with me. Um, just spinning here. So those that are, are uh, don't have any other questions, thank you all for coming. I hope that was good information. Please don't hesitate to email me if you have something specific that you want, want to ask. Again, this link that I'm sending right now is to that reading log that the literacy team made. Uh, you will only be able to view it. You'll have to do make a copy for, your, for yourself. So again, thanks everyone and thanks for being patient with all of the questions and any little technical difficulties that we had.